Hi friends, how are you? And today we want to share with you um, five things. Five? Six. Five plus a bonus. There you go. Five things plus a bonus we wish we knew. Before we bought a boat. Before we bought. <laughs> Drum roll. <laughs> Number one. Um, I wish I knew how awesome it was before we bought. Um, only because I would have bought 10 years ago, 15 years ago. I would have bought in my early 20s. Absolutely. It's so much fun. Definitely. Yeah, I may not have moved aboard, um, you know, early in a career or something like that, or maybe I would have, but uh, maybe bought a smaller boat, started off different, um, but at least would have bought a boat. You know, you can start in boats in five or $10,000. Yep. And even if it's a weekend boat, right? So I would have done that had I known um, 15 years ago. Absolutely. And I wouldn't have been better, I wouldn't have been worse off for it. I would have been better off. Uh, for sure. So that's my first thing. Uh, number two. For me, it was the cock. The cock. <laughs> for me, it was the cockpit space. <laughs> yeah, definitely the cockpit pit space. Um, I didn't think that was important as we were shopping. No, he was very um, focused on finding a center cockpit boat which the cockpit would have been so much smaller and now that we've been living on board for the last couple of months we've had dinners out here we've lounged we've had friends over like just being able to lay out and chill and relax i feel like this boat gives us the space that a center cockpit boat that we were looking at originally would not have given us yeah um deck space is good and that was my thoughts looking at center cockpits you get more deck space aft and forward and that, that's great, that's certainly killer. But for the boats we were looking at in the 40 to 40 foot range, um, I think to get the space I wanted in a cockpit, I'd probably have to go to 50 and that was way too you huge. You said 40 to 40 foot. 40 to 44 feet? Yeah. You said 40 to 40. Did I? Well, in the low 40s. <laughs> Anyway, the cockpit space, I didn't think was as important as it really is. Our broker told us that, and we knew it was important, but um, we kind of got lucky that this boat actually has the space, but not just open space, also space with strong, solid supports, which come in every time we sail. Mm -hmm. They come in handy, and place I didn't know that. Tie up the little puppy. <laughs> yeah, place to put cell phones and even like a cooler for a few drinks so you don't have to go down below uh, but still with lots of space all the way around i didn't think all that through when we were shopping we just got lucky with it yeah it's definitely a, a big benefit on this <laughs> all right so uh number three um something we learned and this is you know it's just for us i guess because we still don't really know what we're talking about <laughs> but we've learned um, people who've sailed 10, 20 years usually don't know what they're talking about either. <laughs> Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has opinions. <laughs> and we appreciate hearing them all because no one really knows. And it all depends on who you are, what you're doing. So for us though, number three, lesson we wish we knew before uh, we started shopping was size matters, but you don't need as big as you think you might. No. And <laughs> So. We looked at huge boats. We looked at all sizes of yeah. boats. Um, Matt had it in his head. He wanted a 45 and a 47 and even a 50 at one point. So we spent a lot of time looking at larger boats when really this 40 foot boat was just right. Yeah, at one point we were really in love with the a Benito, a 47 foot. Um, I don't remember if it's a 473 or a 467. But yeah, big and spacious and uh, but ultimately, I guess it comes down to, uh, like we said, number one cockpit. Um, storage is important, but we'll hit that number four. But really the size, you don't need as much as you think. And it's mm -hmm. actually for us, it's been so much easier living in a smaller space <laughs> than living in a large four bedroom yeah. house plus office and living room dining. It's easier to clean, easier to maintain. Yeah, there is no cleaning and maintaining. It's just your daily, just wipe up after yourself. Um, 
no vacuuming. There's no cleaning the gutters. Uh, Instead, it's, we clean the bilge and we wipe the cockpit. Yeah, it's, yeah, we do. It's a different type of chores, but it's a smaller space, and so that has been very, very nice. It's been great, and it hasn't been too tight. Um, maybe the first week or two, I had to think and realize, oh, we're going to be bumping into each other more. <laughs> we're going to be. And so you kind of adjust to that, and it's it's cool. Yeah. Gives you a chance to, to bump and hug and all that, right, kiddo? So real close. <laughs> <laughs> so number four on our list of things we wish we would have known before we bought a boat would be that it's a lot easier to get rid of stuff mm. um, than you think it is. I mean, we went through selling the house, moving into the apartment, and I let go of a whole lot of things. But there were all of these things that I boxed up and put into storage saying, this is going to the boat, this is going to the boat. And then when it came time to close out the apartment and really move into the boat, I went to the storage and it was like, why did I save that? I don't, I don't need that on the boat. I have everything I need on the boat already. So it was a lot easier for me to go through stages of getting rid of it. I think was helpful mm -hmm. for yeah. me. But at the end of the day, I didn't need those things. All right, so number five, what's number five? Uh, the water tanks. Water tanks, yes. Um, how much to look for and how much you need is so important. Um, and not just traveling, but even at the dock, smaller tanks mean more refills on another tour you have to do. Yeah, when Matt was looking at all the specs, it would be like, oh, this one has a 100-gallon water tank, or this one has 75, and I was like, oh, no big deal. But actually living on the boat, you realize the importance. and of conserving and how fast you go through it and shorter okay. showers yeah so yeah it's important that's very true and um so we have 97 gallons which seems to be enough but i didn't know that before we bought we got lucky again yeah we've gotten very lucky with the things on our boat yeah so i definitely wouldn't now that i know it in shopping if something had less than 100 gallons i wouldn't even consider it. no wouldn't so water tanks important Not for three people yeah, for sure. My neighbor has got 200 gallons, and I'm thinking, wow, wow. that'd be nice. <laughs> that would be awesome. Like, that would be a big selling point now that I know. Right. Definitely. So, hope you enjoyed those five uh, lessons that we learned. We have a bonus. Yeah. Um, I would think the price and all of the additional spare parts that come with the boat. Elaborate. Yeah, we didn't know ahead of time whether to get a discounted boat where we put work into it or pay a premium and you know have the benefit of someone else having the quality work and have all the accessories aboard uh, and I think now we know paying the premium and getting something where someone put good work into it took very well uh, maintained the boat and has ample spare parts that's been a um, headache removed having all the extra spare parts yeah. if you enjoyed this video uh, we appreciate you watching it if you enjoyed it leave us a comment if you had any questions um, or any comments let's just chat down below yeah let's go have some coffee let's do it